Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> Today we're going to do a watercolor painting on 11 by 14 uh, Fabriano Artistico uh, cold press, 300 pound cold press paper. And it's a scene uh, from a photograph by uh, Jack Bell Photography in uh, Yellowstone National Park somewhere. That's what I call it, Yellowstone somewhere, because it doesn't look like your typical Yellowstone scene with the big mountains and rushing streams and that sort of stuff. <clears throat> so it's a nice winter scene that we're going to work on today in watercolor and uh, hopefully uh, you'll get a chance to try it and uh, hope you like it. Um, I'm going to run over to my computer and show you the, the images that I have, the reference photos that I have for you to download and uh, come back to the easel. We'll get started. Hold on. Okay, here I am at my computer now and uh, this is the original photo. It's a little wider than uh, I typically like uh, because my, uh, my setup is set for like a uh, <clears throat> 11 by 14. So what I typically do when I get these beautiful photos uh, from Jack Bell is I crop them down to fit my uh, paper size. And so uh, that's the first thing I did. This is the uh, crop version. You see I took a little bit out of uh, each, each side width wise. I left the uh, vertical part pretty much alone. But uh, I took a little bit of the, uh, the, the stream off the left of the, the paper, and that's a, that's a nice uh, design trick that you can do that kind of uh, shows that there's a continuation here, and it, uh, it's an interesting uh, compositional element. Um, and I, then, I, of course, I take it out to uh, the uh, website called griddrawingtool.com, and I put my 5x4 grid on it, and this is what that looks like. Uh, you have this photo in the links below. And then I also take all the color out of it and I leave it in a black and white uh, sort of value map sort of way. And uh, you can see there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the foreground here that's going to be hard to paint. It's kind of why I picked it to see if we could uh, demonstrate these uh, these sort of lumps of snow, if you will, in the foreground and uh, try to make those look as realistic as possible. And finally, I have for you a sketch that you can download. And this is it. It's pretty simple. Um, it's really not a complicated painting uh, <clears throat> in, in that regard. But uh, the challenge is in, in making the snow look real and making the uh, getting the depth that we want to get and uh, making it look like a nice winter scene out in the uh, middle of Yellowstone National Park somewhere. So uh, that's all I want to show you here at the computer. I'll go back to my easel now and we'll go through the paints and brushes and we'll get started. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, I'm back at my uh, easel now and I have here my palette for you. Uh, this is my uh, Sterling Edwards palette as you can see and uh, it has uh, the colors that I'll go through in a minute, but I want to show you. I did do a little pre-work here. I, I used some of my uh, fine line applicator. This is the uh, 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 it's masking fluid that I use, and I have some of it on here. You probably can't even see it on the uh, on the painting or on the uh, paper here, but I have some there in some areas I want to protect the white, and it has this very 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 narrow uh, point on it, and it's almost like a needle. You can take it off and put these very fine little flicks of uh, masking fluid there. Then I use my other regular masking fluid. And some of these trees in the background I wanted to keep white. I used a, uh, a sponge, like a sea sponge. And I used the tip of this and I sort of dabbed and touched some of these areas with masking fluid to give me some of that uh, look that will uh, represent the um, snow on these uh, background trees. Um, and then, so now what I have left here in the, in the palette are my brushes. These are my uh, bristle brushes, a medium and small, Sterling Edwards designed uh, brushes. A couple of flats, a uh, number one, in, uh, one inch flat and a half inch flat. I have about three rounds. I have a number 12, a number eight, a number, uh, I'm sorry, 12, yeah, 12, eight, and four. And then I have a number six script liner. So that's the brushes and uh, that's the masking fluid. And uh, that's what I've done already to get set up. Let me go around the paints now and uh, explain to you the colors, which if you follow me very much, you'll know these are the uh, Holbein colors that I use in my palette. And uh, starting here on the lower right, we have Payne's Gray. We have Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep Blue, Prussian Blue, 
permanent violet, hooker's green, umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone scarlet, bright rose, brilliant orange, quinacridone gold, permanent yellow deep, and cad lemon yellow. Okay, that's the paints, that's the brushes, um, and that's the uh, setup I have for you here. And I'll get started here. I want to get my uh, um, palette arranged so people watching live, we can see this. And uh, so let me zoom in on this and get my camera control set up here so we can all see what's going on. There we go. That's about as good as I can get it right now for you to see as much as you can. And uh, with that said, I think that's all the preparation we need to get started. Um, I'm going to use my, uh, well, I also want to tell you I have a, another computer up here by my elbow. And if, you, uh, if you're watching live, you can uh, type in the chat window there and talk to me and give me critiques or give me uh, suggestions or whatever. Ask a question if you have one, and I'll try to see if I can answer it. And uh, other than that, we're ready to paint. So I'm going to just take my uh, big one-inch brush and put some clear water on this paper. I don't think I'm going to wet the whole thing down right now. Just notice my brush is a little bit dirty. Got some brown left in there from somewhere. I try to clean these brushes out after every painting, but sometimes I get some uh, water left. I'm going to put in, uh, just sort of give myself some uh, loose uh, areas here, sort of in a diagonal fashion. Uh, that's kind of how I feel this sky is going with the, uh, uh, the way the uh, clouds look. Uh, maybe I'll put some down here just to uh, throw in some base color under here. Um, whatever, I, don't, I can always wet it down later if I need more, but I just want to give it a, a light coat right now and get this started. Okay, so much for that. All right, um, let me see here. We're going to start with uh, some of my ultramarine deep blue as a uh, sky color. And uh, get myself a little mix out here on the palette. And we'll just start in up here and start throwing in some, some of this blue sky that's got some clouds floating around in it. And uh, we're going to bring it down so far. And then uh, we're going to change the color. And uh, over here, we've sort of got these things going the other way. Okay, let's see what that looks like. A little darker on the left side than it is the right side. That's okay. That's a good um, compositional idea as well. You don't want to have both corners look identical in terms of their color or whatever. Over here, I'll went a little bit more over there. Okay. Um, so that's that color. Let's look at the uh, next color I want to put in. I want to put in some of this uh, little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm going to just mix it with this blue that I have here and uh, see if I can get a uh, an interesting gray color that sort of starts right in here. That's not gray enough. A little more. These colors do lighten up, as you know. Um, and we'll sort of give it some of these streaks like this, like that. And then we're going to come back and we want to get this orange in there. This, uh, not sure what this, how this color is going to look when I try to put it on, but I'm going to mix it with uh, whatever is in my brush, a little bit of my palette, and uh, we'll see if we can start like right in here and throw some in. Don't want it to run too much. Not quite the color I want. Put a little yellow in there and see if I can change that color a little bit from that dense orange to a little bit of a little bit a better color here. Let's see, this is gonna shoot off this direction, over in this direction, over in this direction. Okay, that's uh, not quite as bright as I would like it to be. So let me just put another little dip of orange in here and see if I can throw some of this in. A 
I want to try to leave this area kind of white. There's some white areas in here I want to leave. Uh, over in this area here, besides the, see this up here has a little more gray in it. So I'm just kind of scumbling now and letting this brush sort of pull off, paper pull off whatever it will. And, uh, Let's see, I'm going to take my, get a little water on this and just sort of soften. That's not how I want to do it. I want to use the brush. Actually, I don't want to even use that brush. I'm going to use this uh, bristle brush here and I want to kind of soften this edge right here. I don't want that hard edge in there. Okay, so that's better. Soften a few edges in here. Okay, and then we'll come back and we'll throw in just a few more darker streaks to kind of amplify this area. Something like that. If those edges look too hard, I'll come back and soften those up too. We'll put just a little more blue up here, I think, in the top left corner. See, this paint dries, as you've heard me say before, it dries at least 20-30% lighter than what you put on. So if you're putting on, it looks too, uh, looks about right. It's probably about wrong. So uh, it's the only way I know how to explain it. Uh, so let's put a few more soft edges in here, feather this out. This is a little too hard edge. I'll use the side of the brush, the back of the brush. Okay, that's... If I mess around too much, I will really screw it up. So I don't want to do too much more than that. Okay. It's going to give me the sort of the depth that I'm looking for, I hope, in there. That's the idea of this particular color and, and uh, trying to keep it light. And uh, I'm even going to soften this here so I don't have a hard edge floating around out there. You may not be able to see that hard edge, but I can see it here and I realize it's going to be too, uh, too distracting actually. So let's just soften it all off there. This bristle brush is great for that kind of thing. It just kind of softens it all off. Okay. So we'll leave that and uh, See if I can put maybe a little more tone here in some of this area. I'll put a few colors in here that are going to be the underpinning of, a, of my snow. I don't want this snow to be completely white everywhere. I've got some areas that are already carved out that are going to be uncovered when I uh, take the masking fluid off. But I just want this to sort of get a little tone to it here so it looks like there's maybe something in the shade. All right. So that's our big, fast Well, thank you for that comment. This is, uh, I must say, I absolutely enjoy the videos you put out. Your approach is very good to a follow and shows that it does pay to be a little methodical when it comes to being creative. Well, thank you. I can't say your name, Lacto Syllabus Prime, it looks like. I don't know how to say that name, but thank you for being here and thanks for joining us today. All right, um, I'm going to leave that sky alone or I'm going to mess it up. I'm going to. I say that and then I go back in and try to fix something. I, want, I don't want a lot of hard edges in that sky. All right. So that'll do for that. Uh, that'll do for this. And now we're going to look at these background trees <clears throat> and see if we can get those in. Let me clean my palette out a little bit. I got too much different colors sitting around here. Let's get rid of that.
All right, keep going here. Uh, yeah, D. Schmidt, you can't get Sterling Edwards brushes uh, from Canada. Uh, you can actually buy them from his website, uh, sterlingedwards.com. He has a store on there, and he uh, and you can actually buy them there. I assume you can get them shipped to you in Canada. I, I'm pretty sure you do. I, I know he ships his product uh, to different countries, and uh, so uh, I know you can get them there. Um, and I assume they would get shipped to you with no problem. I see a little bit of a. Something needs to be lightened up here. Okay. All right, so these background trees now, we're going to start in here. I think I'm going to start with a smaller brush. I think I'm going to get my half inch brush out. And these trees are just really. They're borderline black in this photo, uh, but uh, I'm going to mix my, uh, take some of my green, my uh, hooker's green, and my blue, ultra blue, and some um, my Payne's gray here, and I'm going to see if I can get some of these colors that I need in these trees back here. I'm going to see if I can just start a Something going across here with sort of a, uh, they go all the way down to this line here. And I got some, some uh, masking fluid on here that is uh, already uh, covering the paper. So when I come back and take that masking fluid off, it will show white white as snow. I'm going to just put a few more in there. I want these to kind of stand out. There are some uh, some of these stand out pretty nicely and some are covered in a lot of snow so I, I don't mind some breaks here and there but this flat brush just does a wonderful job just putting in these trees back here and put a few more in. Put some peaks up there. And let's change the color, get a little more green in it maybe. Change that color around a little bit. So let's see here. So I'm giving it more vertical. Uh, it looks almost like a straight line going across there when you look at the photograph. But I'm giving it a little more definition, a little more uh, up and down. Somebody from France writing to me in French. Well, thank you. I hope you can understand my English. Merci beaucoup. Um, and uh, thank you for joining. I can't pull my Google Translator out here when I'm painting, otherwise I would put it in there and ask it to tell me what you said, but it, I think it's positive. I hope it is anyway. There a few things here. I'm just putting a line of trees all the way across this background here. Leaving gaps here and there changing the color, adding some green, adding some yellow, some places, because this is getting some reflection from the sky, this orange sky. It's changing some of the colors. And um, so we'll just put these across here like this, add some as we start getting this further out, I want to start lightening this up so that it doesn't look like it's all, it, I want it to look like it recedes into the background. So I'm going to start adding a little more water and lightening these up a little bit so the, you can still see them, but they're going to be getting lighter as they go off in the distance. 
getting some water there. Let's pick that up. These brushes from Sterling Edwards are just really nice. They're uh, nylon brushes and uh, the, the ones that aren't bristle. He sells a lot of those bristle brushes. Um, they're really good for doing that, sort of that blending that I was doing a while ago. But these are a nice make of uh, nylon brushes and they're really good at picking up. I don't need to do much here. I'm going to put some trees in front of that. They're really good at picking up water. If you get a part of water that's uh, running down here, you can pick that up and lighten things up. I'm going to lighten a little bit more of this up here. I want it to look more um, like that. So this area over here turned light on me. I'm going to put some more dark on it. Darken them up a little bit, add a few more trees. As it dries, I can put another layer in front of it if I want to spend a lot of time putting more trees in here, which is something you can do to make it look fuller and darker. You can uh, put another layer of trees over this. You can even bring it further down if you want. And uh, so that's about all we have to do for this background here. I just want to let these sort of have some different, different tones. The ones on the left are closer to us, so I want them to be darker, right? You want to you have those uh, to give that optical illusion that the stuff is going back in the distance. Um, so, put a little my purple in there and uh, put just a few things that get a little bit of color back there. And, uh, Okay, so <clears throat> that, I like the way that looks. I'm going to use my <clears throat> one inch brush with clear water in it and just sort of soften some of these areas here to make it look like it's more foggy than it is even back there. Like that. Blend a few of these together, maybe, like that. Okay, so I still have all this here that has, you can now see these areas that have the uh, masking on it that I'll be pull, peeling that off after a while when this gets totally dry. And uh, then we'll see what we can do to fix those up. All right, so now <clears throat> I'm really down to uh, a lot of this middle ground and some of the trees and the snow and trying to make this look like it's got a lot of uh, bumps and undulations and that sort of stuff in it. Um, so let's go back and see if we can put a few more things back in here like this. Make it look like there's some snow back in there. Probably needs to be lighter than that. That's a little too dark probably. But we've got a number of this is all pretty white here. We do have some some areas that are back here where this creek starts flowing in. Um, if you're going to put those in, you want to try to make the bottom a little darker in the top and you can even soften that top edge uh, a little bit to uh, help it blend in with the, the background there behind it. Just a damp bristle brush just kind of knocks that edge off. Again it's a soft edge right there that I want. I don't mind a hard edge sort of in front but I want a soft edge toward the back. All right, so let's see if we can. I'm making optical illusions here for you, I'm trying to. And uh, oh, 
Okay, so this starts coming forward and gets into this area. We've got some, uh, some more of this snow that sort of looks like this. I'm just using the side of the brush and just letting it bounce. Like that. Over here we've got some more. It's the uh, cold press paper helps do this um, because the cold press paper has a lot of these bumps on it and the bumps stick up and where the bump touches the paintbrush that's where it pulls off the paint so I'm just painting side I've got some more stuff I want to put in over there but this is sort of the idea in this area out here <clears throat> to give it a lot of bumps the bumps in the snow. I'm not trying to paint every bump in the snow. I'm just trying to let the the uh, paper pull off a certain amount of paint and based on the bumps and how wet the paint is in the brush is what it will pull off. So I can keep going back over this. If I go over it too many times I'll, I'll fill all those bumps in and it won't look like it's snow uh, snow dips in the snow so I have to be careful about that okay this here has got some got some uh, shadow here and it kind of touches the water and uh, little bumps in there and uh, I'll use my brush with my bristle brush I'm going to take the top off of that and just blend it very lightly right into the snow behind it like that now it looks like that curves over which is what I'm trying to get <clears throat> all right um, <clears throat> how are we doing back here this is I think there was some area probably an area back here that has a much more distinctive uh, drop in it like right in this area here there's a other area that's sort of dark and it makes it look more like a uh, like another berm back there Okay, so I'm trying to put these darker berms in places where they look like they belong and trying to uh, ferret out the rest of that. Okay, I like the way that's looking. Have any questions again, please ask me. I'll try to answer them. And uh, hopefully we can get some uh, dialogue going here. Some of this... Uh, Some of this in this area along here has a little bit of the, I don't know, it's almost a, a brownish color. I'm going to see if I can keep from getting it too. It's a little bit of a different color. Again, it's uh, it's the uh, the bank of this area that comes down and <clears throat> touches the water and uh, sort of rough on this side and the top of course is going to be softened soft edges okay so now that looks like that's even more curving down this way into the water. 
Okay, let's see. So we're, we're going to have a stream that goes through here. I'm not painting the stream yet, but you can kind of see the stream is there. Um, and um, let's see, there's another, and this is on this side of the stream. Now this, in this case, I'm going to try to make these on this side of the, the bank. I'm going to try to make those look more like they're, uh, they're hard on the top and they're going to be soft on the bottom. So I'll be taking my uh, taking my brush here and we'll be softening the bottom edge of these. I want this to blend in with the snow on this side of the water. You see the difference that makes? It makes the makes a hard edge here on this side, soft edge on that side. On this side of the, the river, the creek, it's hard down by the creek, but it's blended softly this way. Okay. So let's see, we've got some other shadows and a bunch of other stuff going on in here. Uh, I'll throw a few of those in there now and we can come back and fix those later if we want. But uh, it's one of, it looks like there's more activity, that mu something else going on here in the snow. That uh, If I want to make it look like it bends this way, I, I make a soft edge on top, hard edge on the bottom. I want to make it look like it goes the other way. I change, change it around and put the soft edge toward me here. And uh, it, it makes a difference in, in, in the optical illusion I'm creating. So down here we're going to just have some more snow like that, very lightly. And uh, over here is about the same thing. Let's put that in now. I got this in the brush. So it's supposed to be snow. You think it would be white, but I'm not making it all white. Okay, now see how this is all dry back here. Um, I can start putting in some of those background trees, which I think is what I'll be do. I'm going to get my uh, script liner out here, <clears throat> and uh, that's that's this long narrow brush with a long. Um, long bristles. See what I got. I'm going to get some brown in here maybe. Hard to tell. Those things are definitely sort of brown, but they're also dark. They're a little bit in in shadow because there there is a little bit of a backlight here. The sun is kind of back this way. And it's kind of coming, uh, coming across, I guess, this way. So these trees have a darker side on the left than they do on the right. And now that I think about this again, I think I'm going to stick with my half inch brush for this one big tree that goes way up here, I think. Um, just because I think I can paint a better, better tree uh, with this half inch brush than I can it starts all the way down here somewhere, like right in here. It's got to get darker than that. Put a few of my... Okay, we're going to start going up here. I'm using umber and burnt umber, or, uh, burnt sienna and Payne's Gray to make this I'm going to go up here. This tree is going right off the, almost right off the top of the painting here. Like that. Make it a little wider down here at the bottom to make sure it 
stands up and holds what's above it. <clears throat> okay, that's probably the, the biggest tree in the forest. <laughs> Another tree that's sort of right in here somewhere that kind of starts at a different point. And these flat brushes are great for this kind of stuff. I could use the script liner, which I thought I was going to do, but to do that, you got to kind of have a pretty steady hand to uh, paint that. And we got another one here, and another one like right in here somewhere. Sort of goes. Come down this way and take them top to bottom, bottom to top. However you want to do it. And they get fatter as they get down to the ground level. All right. And there's a bunch more. There's some in here that have some snow on beside them. I'm going to scrape that snow off and we'll have that. Um, several in here that have a kind of go up and that type of thing. Actually, a lot in here. I could spend a lot of time just ad libbing and doing these. These trees, they're kind of fun. Um, a few more here, let's put another. This I have some masking fluid that I'm going to paint right over that a little bit and let it, when I peel that off, you'll be able to see the snow. I think there's some more here that I can do the same kind of thing with. Okay, good. All right, so anything that's in front will be darker. Anything that's further back will be lighter. And uh, so I'm just gonna go across here and see if I can find a few more places to put some of these trees and make them different angles, make them different widths, make them more dis different distances between them. Don't try to make them all the same distance apart. That's a good compositional technique as I make one that's just about the same. All right, let me stand back and look at that for a minute. I um, think the bottom of these should be just a little more, a little darker maybe here. I gotta get some dark paint to make it darker. And I want them to be I want them to be in the snow. I don't want them to be sitting on top. Like it's one of the sort of, this is the old soft edge thing for the snow, right? I want it to be like a shadow. If it's going to make a shadow, it's going to be this way. It's hard for you to see that probably, but I'm just making a little mound of snow and a slight shadow there that's going to come off of these trees. This way is going to have a should be about the same type of angle that that we have for these uh, other ones, for these other shadows down here. So if the sun's coming from over there, I want these shadows to point to the sun, right? That's what we're doing here. Okay, how are we doing on time? 38 minutes, not bad. All right, let's leave that for a minute. And uh, I've got a bunch more trees I can put in over here, but I think I'm gonna do that with my script liner maybe after a while. Let's see if we can work on this uh, uh, creek that's coming down here. I'm thinking I'll try my, oh, my Prussian blue will fit with this or not. I think maybe it will. It has to be very dark. Um, you ever notice how so many winter scenes when you take a photo of them, the, if they got water in them, the water, even though the sky may be blue, the water is almost black. 
I'm going to go back here and start in this area with my creek. Comes over, it's back here like this. Put enough blue in it so that you know there's a sky above that's reflecting on it, but I'm also uh, keeping it very dark. And um, this will dry out better, dry out lighter as we go back in the distance. Uh, and as we come forward, I'm going to start putting more paint in it to make it darker even as we come forward. But I want to get this, you see here, it comes out like this. Um, this is coming here this way. Goes all the way out there like that. And I'm leaving some gaps in it, leaving it because the, the water is kind of moving, so I want it to uh, look like it's moving, got some movement in it. So I'm just using this number four round brush and just moving it toward me. And I'm using horizontal brush strokes that uh, match the, uh, the lay of the land, if you will. And these have some uh, dips in them. So the, the colors I use are Prussian blue and a little bit of uh, my Payne's gray to darken it down. So I wanna, as I get closer, I want to start putting some more indentations in here to make you think there there we have uh, things hanging over over the bank the bank coming into the water here. And I already have some more masking here with these little flicks. I use that fine liner and got these things that are going to show up white when I peel that that masking off. Um, so they're going to look, uh, you're going to see those through there. I don't know if you can see that right now, but there's a bunch of little fine line flicks, flicks in there. I want this to have some changes, some movement in there. comes forward. I want to get a little darker. So I'm just kind of scrubbing here. painted a winter scene of a forest one time that had several crisscrossing um, parts of a creek in it and I painted them all black because <laughs> that's what the photograph looked like since I've learned it you want them dark they don't have to be black if I were standing out there I would see the blues and I would see the reflection of other colors in there um, a case like this, I would probably even see that orange, some of that orange in there probably, which I may want to put a little bit in here. But that photograph, when you look at the photograph, it's just pure, almost black. So I'm using Prussian blue and Payne's gray to get that dark as I can, throwing in a little bit of my ultra blue. So I can have as much or as little motion in the water as I want here based on how I feel at the time. All right, see, I'm getting in an area where I need a bigger brush, so let me get my flat out and uh, 
Start putting in some get some of this darker 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 drier paint. in there just to be ornery. It's probably going to turn brown on me. Okay. I can come back and touch that up if I need to, but right now I think it's about the way I want to leave it for now. Um, let's see here, I put a few more oh, fine points on this coming up here. I do have some masking fluid in there that I can peel off and. Uh, Okay, I want, it, I want it to show darker here in the front. Okay, I think that's just about enough for that stream. So let's stop on that. <clears throat> All right, let's take this little brush we've got here with our browns and so actually I need the script liner for this. This is where I want to put in these uh, some more um, little, little, not trunks, but branches <clears throat> that are kind of hanging off of these trees up here to kind of make sure that they, they look like they're not dead anyway. They're at least, we're alive at one point in time. So we've got a bunch of stuff going out like this. have little things off of them. Like that. See, I'm letting this dry down here now. That's why I'm working where I am here. I make this And over here, I'll have a few things, extend them out a little bit. So we can put a few more vertical trees in some of these areas that are kind of left out. You can do it however you want to do it. I'm just sort of doing what kind of makes me feel right right now. So I'm going to over here, I want to put in a few more things. Over in this area, there's quite a few trees that are mixed in here. Let's get a little more paint. And we'll just start putting in a number of these. And those could even be smaller, so they look like they're maybe going back in the distance as well. So I'll put a few 
things on them to make them look like they're they are alive when it's not winter and uh, I think I like the way that looks Let me stop put a few more in here maybe all right <clears throat> there's that put a couple of Little light bright things in here like that and then we've got a whole bunch of stuff over here that we're gonna see if we can work on before we finish up just about done here folks but I want to uh, want this to dry enough to take off the uh, take off this uh, oh, this has to be darker on the left side a little bit um, I want to take off this masking fluid here and uh, All right, if I keep messing with that, I'll make it worse. So let me stop. Let me see how the masking fluid's doing. I'm going to see. I've got one of these. Uh, it, this is designed to take off masking fluid. You just sort of rub it on there, and it just picks it all up. So I don't know if you can see some of that coming through now. Some of these um, things I've got that are sticking over in the water. And you could put a lot more on this if you want to do it. You could put a lot more masking fluid on there if you try this. Um, it will um, see here. Okay, I got a few up here. Kind of step over the water. A few along here. A whole bunch right through here. I didn't paint anything behind them, so it's going to be hard to see them. <laughs> okay, you can see some of the some of the. Uh, snow there showing up. Hi Sarah, Amy, hi, welcome. So I've got about another 30 seconds here to get all this stuff off and I'll be ready to finish this up. Mm. See that stuff just picks up, it's called a Masking fluid pickup. Should have a little darker blue background there on that one, but um, the idea is that you put these things on and then you paint something darker either around it or over it or something. And uh, I think I've got most of them off of there. Okay, I'm going to stop. I could do mess around with that some more if I want but um, pretty much going to finish this up now with just a few more of these uh, this scumbles here that I've done here um, see if it uh, if I can make it look a little better I'm getting my blue here and side of the brush It's not going to look identical to the photograph because that would take me forever to do that. Um, so I just want to uh, get me a drink of water here, folks. Hold on just a minute. paint for 60 minutes my hands start cramping up <clears throat> mostly because I get myself dehydrated I take medicine that dehydrates me and uh, 
it's kind of why I'm trying to speed these paintings up a little bit to uh, stick them and try to get them done in 60 minutes if I can. Over here, I want this to be a little bit more uh, Payne's Gray-like. This is going to be smoothed in. I'm not going to leave it that rough on this side. Okay, I think you can get the gist of this one. Uh, probably have just a few more things I could touch up out here in the the back where these trees are back here. Kind of make it look a little more like some trees back there. Put a few colors in there. Something like this. I'm just touching this, kind of letting it cover over. Um, so I think I could put a lot more stuff in here. I could put a lot more, um, a lot more little twigs and things growing out of the ground here if I want to. But uh, I think I'm gonna maybe just put a couple of things in here. This is still wet here at the bottom. and put a little dimple of snow around him to something like that and then just take a bunch of stuff in my brush and just give it a few more splatters here and there and it will kind of loosen everything up and kind of make it look like it all belongs in the same all these things can just be rocks or who knows what sitting out there in the snow okay let's say time for the name here where are we going 57 minutes not too bad right here we'll go 't have made it a little cleaner maybe but uh, basically I uh, wanted to uh, give you that let you see how that works and uh, I think it made a pretty decent little painting and uh, hope you like that <clears throat> hope you uh, give it a try and uh, <clears throat> one thing I <clears throat> like to do excuse me would be get a mat out and put it over this and uh, this is kind of what it would look like with the mat around it. I can't put it exactly down because of my easel, but something like that. Um, and then the last thing that I did forget, and you know what it is. Got the little birds flying around out here looking for something to eat. Can't see that, but put a few more here. Yeah, maybe there's even one hanging around over here somewhere. All right. <laughs> All right, got that done. And uh, I want to say thanks again for watching. And uh, if you like uh, this, please like it and share it with your friends. And, uh, and please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I'd really like to get some more subscribers. And uh, 
If you like the music at the beginning while you're waiting, uh, look up AntonioRomo.com. He likes to uh, make some good, he does make some very good piano music. And he lets me put it on front of my uh, uh, live broadcast here. And uh, also uh, Jack Bell Photography. He's a great photographer out in uh, Montana that I love his photographs and his work. So uh, look him up and if you like his work, give him a shout out and tell him so. Um, I think that's all I want to say for now, so until I see you again next time, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.